Okay, moving on with our application. If you haven't seen the previous videos, download the starter files and you have everything there. So I'm going to continue on with the video three in this series. And we're going to learn how to type our state and also how to fetch some data from um, the Finance Space API. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to start by creating some states here in the app component. So we're going to have three states. We're going to have a state that's called character. That is going to hold the character that we grab from the API. And we have character and set character equal react.useState. I usually do it like this now instead of importing them up here. So that's a personal preference. You can import them up here if you want to do that instead. So this one is going to be an object. Then we have a state that's called is loading and set is loading. It's going to be a react dot use state. And we're going to set it to false initially. And the third and last state that we're going to have is the character ID set character ID equal state, And we can set it to one initially. All right. Uh, I'm going to scaffold out some more stuff here for us so we can grab some data from uh, the API. So react.useEffect. And I'm not going to talk very much about this because this is kind of the standard way on how to load data from an API with React. We have a use effect that's for side effects and fetching data is a side effect. So we're going to use the hook React use effect to fetch that data. And we have the dependency array here. And this one is going to trigger, trigger when we change the character ID. So every time we change the state of the character ID, it will trigger this use effect. And this is an async operation. So I create another function inside of the use effect fetch from API because a use effect itself can't be async. API equal async. And we have an error function. And then we can grab some data. And I told you about this before. I import this function from the API file that will grab the data for us. But first, we're going to set is loading to true because we are loading something. And then we grab the result, const result equal await fetch character. And we give it the character ID. Then we set this loading to false because we're not loading anymore. And we're going to store the result in the character state. So set character and we have the result. So this is pretty much it for the use effect. We have to call that fetch from API also. Fetch from API. So this will hopefully grab the data and place it in the character state. And I can do some JSX here also so that we see something on the screen. So it's loading. I make a turner operator. If we're loading, I'm going to type out a p tag that says loading, like this. Very simple stuff here. And inside this one here, we're going to have our card. And I have to create a React fragment because we're going to have one more element, and that is our button to generate a random number. So button on click equal. And I'm going to do an inline arrow function for this one. Set character ID. That's our state. And I'm going to math.lore. Math.random times 10 and plus 1. And that will generate a number between 1 and 10. I close that button. I guess I'm having a little trouble here with the parentheses. Uh, probably one too much. Yeah. And then I need a closing tag for the button. And it's going to say random character and some nice order formatting. And this should be it for the JSX. So I save the file. 
I go back to my application. And it's still working, but we're not displaying anything now, so I have to do that also. Instead of this one for the card here, I change this one to be the character dot name and the IMG URL is gonna be the character dot IMG URL. And now you can see that TypeScript kicks in again because it says that this one don't exist on type and we have an empty object. And this is because we, type, we, we gave this one an initial value of an empty object. So the character is going to have the type of an empty object and that's no good. So how do we specify the type for a state? That's really what this video is about. And it turns out that the use state is also generic so we can have angle brackets and we have the type character from the api.ts file. You can see that I typed everything that we get back from the API. So this is the type of the object that we get back. We get the character object with all these properties here. So I export it here and here you can see that I use an interface because I want to change stuff up and show you how to do stuff differently. So this time it's not a type, it's an interface. And it doesn't matter really if you use a type or an interface. So I'm exporting this one here and I'm also importing this type in my app component. So inside of the angle brackets for the state, we can specify it as a character. And now you can see the TypeScript kicks in here and tell us that the name doesn't exist on the type of an empty object. And if we look here, we actually type this as an empty object because initially we don't have any data. So how do we type this state instead to be correct here? And you can see that I'm importing this type here from the API. I've already typed the data that we get back from the API. So I have this character here. This is typed as an interface. It doesn't matter if you have a type or an interface. I'm just uh, doing this because I want to show you a different way of doing stuff. So instead of a type, I have an interface here and I typed every property that we get back in the object from the API. I export it here and I import it in my app component. So it turns out that use state is also generic. So we can use angle bracket and type it as a character. But then it will complain because we're actually providing it with an empty object and an empty object isn't a character object. So that's not good. TypeScript don't like that. But we can do something that's called typecasting. So as character. Whoops. Something like this. And this will specify this empty object as a character because we're telling that, yeah, this is, uh, this is an empty object, but it's really is a character object. So we're kind of tricking it a little bit here, so to say. So if we say this, go back to our application, you can see that it's actually working, but we haven't created an, an image for our card because I was just using a P tag. So instead of this P tag here in the card component, I'm going to have an image tag and the SRC is going to be the IMG URL, and we also need an alt on this one, so it's going to be character-thumb, and I'm going to self-close it, do some auto-formatting, save it, go back to my application, and now you can see that our application is actually working. So that's sweet. So let's go back one last time to the app in this video and see here about the other states because yeah, we didn't have to type these ones, but that is because this one is a Boolean and we actually provide it with a false value first. TypeScript is smart enough to interpret this itself so it knows that it's a Boolean. But of course, if you want to be more specific, you could do it like this. You can always specify your types for the state here like this, and it works the same on, for example, the use ref in React. So it has this kind of pattern to it that you have a generic and you can set the types for them on a lot of hooks in React. And this one is also the same as we're specifying one as the initial value here. You can see that it is interpreted as a number, so we don't really, to set, really set it explicitly. So that's pretty cool. And React use effect, we don't need to do anything with this one. This is typed by default. So you can see if we hover over it like this, 
React use effect, it's, uh, it has the types for the callback and it has the type for the dependency list and the dependency array. So we don't have to type the use effect at all. We can just use it as it is. All right, that's how you type state in React. Let's move on to the next video.